Okay. I'm with uh, Pierre Horsfall and uh, Roy Le Hercier. What well, officially two ex-politicians. Why? Are you ex? Are you ex-politicians? I mean, is, are you, is anybody ever cured of being politically minded? No, I don't think so. I think once you've been in the system, uh, obviously there are good and bad points about being in the system, but I think uh, you certainly keep uh, an interest in it. Well, I do. You know, I, I'm not one of those who was alienated and said I never want anything to do with it again. I keep an interest in, in the general matters, but uh, I don't get too involved. I still have a number of posts that I fill. They're all volunteer posts. Um, and Having been in politics is actually a help. For example, I'm chairman of the Opera House. Knowing my way around the political system is actually a considerable help sometimes and has been in the past when uh, we needed help with refurbishing the Opera House. To know where to go and who to go to is an advantage. I'm a political animal. I was brought up. Were you a political animal? Was that how you were brought up? Your family, were they... Politics at breakfast table? No, not at all. No, I was uh, I was a first timer. Well, my family weren't involved in politics, but in the old Jersey way, God, I've used that phrase. Uh, they uh, they were certainly interested, and there was always a lot of discussion about uh, the personalities who were involved and what kind of people they were. And there was also a lot of discussion about, um, <coughs> I suppose, what today we'd call conspiracies. You know, who was really running the show. How about parish issues? Was that a family feature? Did you get involved with parish? No, no, we didn't get involved with parish. Certainly talked about it, but right. uh, no, we didn't. Because I'm trying to find parish. these people. Traditionally, they, they go on about the parish system. It's so important. But finding people who are actually involved in it, it's not so easy. Your family involved in parish? No, they weren't. Um, I, I started political life as the, de the deputy for St. Clement. Right. And um, I have started... Um, what do they call them when people come and see you? Surgeries. Right. Surgeries. I started surgeries and things like that. And I therefore became involved to some extent in parish affairs, but uh, it's, it's always been um, uh, almost well, a side issue. You got involved initially in the 1980s, wasn't it? When was your first year in, in the States? I was at first elected in 1975. 75? Oh was that a salaried job then or not? No. There's no. no money at all. How about you, Roy? Was it money when you joined? Yes, yeah, but it was means tested at that oh, point. Exactly. It took, uh, I think, till 2005 when the, uh, the straight uh, salary came in. Was it an issue for you then that there was some sort of payment? And could you have done it without a payment? I probably would have, yes. I mean, it certainly helped, to be quite honest, because by that point I, uh, I'd given up work. So, uh, no, it certainly helped. How about you? Was that, obviously it wasn't an issue, because you did it. So. Well, in, in 75, there was no payment whatsoever. Uh, I, I believe you could apply for a small amount. I don't know what it was. But um, effectively, uh, I did 27 years in an honorary capacity other than the expense allowance which they introduced the first expense allowance introduced I'm not sure when but I'd been in about 10 years by then so was, all was, the time you were there you weren't actually paid you were, no only important. the expense allowance which was started at 200 pounds 200 pounds a year yes yes and after that it increased to a few thousand because you were the equivalent of the chief minister for a while weren't you you were the equivalent of yeah my last my last six years yes and you did that for nothing yes actually. yes I, well, I mean is that I find that extraordinary well it, it, it was all based on uh, a means test and um, we were running a business at that time and I I didn't qualify there was a way around it, which I, which I believe some people took, in that all, all your earnings, you booked them on your wife's account, and, <laughs> and therefore you could show that you hadn't uh, earned very much money. But um, I wasn't prepared to do that. Presumably you both agree now that there's, there should be payment. Presumably that's... Oh, yes, yeah. I think the yes. principle behind it is that nobody should be prevented standing for election on the grounds that they haven't got any money. Mm. 
So it's up to the public to decide if they want that person or not. The extraordinary thing is there's an election just away around the corner, in May there's an election, but there seems to be a great reluctance of people to volunteer, isn't there? There seems to be, even though there is a livable wage, it's not a huge wage, there's a livable wage, but there seems to be a great reluctance of people to come forward. Yes, indeed. Um, the wage, I think, is, is OK. Where I think it went wrong was when, I think, by a private member's, uh, private member's amending bill, everybody paid the same. So even if you've got a job which is virtually full-time, like the Chief Minister, you get the same as the backbencher who does, comparatively speaking, uh, much less time spent, and I think that's that's not right. I think there should be there should be proper recognition of the work that the individual does in any particular job. At the last election, eleven constables were uncontested. They had a they had to be nominated, but they were uncontested in the election. At the moment, there's twelve uncontested constables, so uh, and they do in theory two jobs. Is that, um, that's, to me, it's clearly not acceptable. What do you think, Roy, is that? Uh, no, I don't think it's acceptable. By the way, there are still 11 because of Mary. It's been announced that there'll be another. Oh, is it? It'll oh, be right. the gentleman who uh, contested it at the last Oh, right, he's going to have another The former deputy, Labai. Um, <clears throat> so he's going to have another run at it. No, I think it's wrong. Well, I'm, I'm on record several times, and it hasn't helped me at times, as saying I don't think the constables should be in the States. It, 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 it freezes the voting pattern in the States over crucial issues. I mean, the constables will say, oh, no, we're independent. Look at our votes. They're all over the place. On crucial issues... Uh, they are, a, you know, a, a support to the council. You, you've been a deputy, I mean, you were a deputy, but the question was, well, who's speaking for the parish anyway? Is it the council or the deputies? Oh, it's, it's undoubtedly the deputies. That's what they're elected for. Right. The constable is basically elected to run the parish. Mm. And uh, it's, it's even questionable. Um, I think having the constables in the States at times is helpful. Yeah. So I'm not going to join Roy in saying that they shouldn't be in the States. But I think it's questionable whether having been elected as a constable rather than the state's member, it's questionable whether the constable should be paid exactly the same as the state's members. Right. Perhaps the parish ought to contribute to what the constables are paid. I think they actually get an extra bit payment from the parish. Some do, yes, yeah. so I understand. It's always been sort of shrouded in mystery. Right. That, yeah. uh, well, there's, I mean, here, of course, they could be a minister as well. They could be constable, uh, state's rep, and uh, a minister in the government as well. In theory, you know, mm -hmm. and some of them are... Some are. Some are. Some are. Some are. For the larger parishes, it's a pretty ridiculous situation. There will be inspectors coming in from.